to help us understand the content of energy and macronutrients, as well as some micronutrients, in the food we eat, the label of every packaged food has to carry a standardized nutrition facts panel. For fresh produce and other foods that do not come prepackaged, such as bananas or chicken breast, we can refer to food composition tables, for example, the United States Department of Agriculture's National Nutrient Database, for standard reference, which is available online, free of charge. Nutrition facts labels indicate the nutrient content per serving of food. While this has an obvious practical advantage, it can also be very deceiving because your idea of a serving may largely differ from what the label says. This bag of cheese ball snacks says it contains 9 grams of fat per serving. However, it also says that a bag contains 9 servings. Now, I don't know about you, but I for one am not going to eat 9 times out of this bag. In fact, I could very easily eat half of it right after I open it, and so it would be getting 40 grams of fat and 675 calories. In this course, we will express nutrient content as percent in weight. The advantage of doing it this way is that it's independent of the serving size. So, for example, we would say that these chips have 32% of fat. This means that 32% of each cheese ball is made of fat. If I eat 100 grams of them, of course I'm getting 32 grams of fat. If I eat 50 grams, I'm getting 32% of 50, so 16 grams of fat. And if I eat 28 grams, which is what the label says it's one serving, then of course I'm getting 32% of 28, 9 grams of fat, like the label says. This is the percent nutrient composition of whole wheat bread, and this is the color code we will use throughout the course. Composition in weight of any food is mostly accounted for by water, digestible carbohydrates, fat, proteins, and fiber, and alcohol for alcoholic drinks. Micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals, and other phytochemicals are present in smaller amounts and in most cases account for less than 1% of a food's weight. As we study the different nutrients, you will learn that in order to make an appropriate nutritional evaluation of a food, we need more details about its composition. For example, not only the total amount of fat, but what type of fat, not only the total amount of protein, but the quality of that protein, and of course, not only the total amount of carbohydrate, but its composition, for example, how much simple sugar and how much starch. Also, fiber content needs to be broken into soluble and insoluble fiber. But for the time being, let's just focus on this simple partitioning. As you can see, 43% of the weight of whole wheat bread is accounted for by water. 34% is carbs, 13% is proteins, 7% is fiber, and 3% is lipids. So how many grams of proteins are in 100 grams of this bread? Is it 13% of 100 is 13, so 13 grams of protein. But a slice of this bread actually weighs 30 grams. So how many grams of proteins do we have in one slice of bread? 13% of 30. So 30 divided by 100 times 13, about 4 grams of protein. Another useful calculation that it's often done is looking at how much of the energy of a food comes from the different macronutrients. This can be useful because it allows us to easily compare a food with the ideal distribution of macronutrients in our diet, which, as you'll remember, is set in the DRIs. In this calculation, we consider that water and fiber provide no calories, that carbs and proteins provide 4 calories per gram, and that lipids provide 9 calories per gram. For example, this is percent nutrient composition of whole milk. As you can see, it's mostly water, with 4% of carbohydrates, mostly lactose, 3% of lipids, and 3% of proteins. 3% of lipids doesn't look that much, so why do we always say it's better to drink low-fat milk? Well, if we look at how many of the calories from milk come from fat, we find that it's about half, and that is a lot. How did we calculate that? If we consider 100 grams of milk, it has 3 grams of proteins times 4 calories per gram, 12 calories from proteins. Then 3 grams of lipids times 9 calories per gram, so 27 calories from lipids. And then 4 grams of carbs times 4 calories per gram, so 16 calories from carbs. Water, of course, provides no calories. 12 plus 27 plus 16 is 55 calories. So 100 grams of milk provide 55 calories. 27 of these calories come from lipids. In percent, this is 27 divided by 55 times 100, so 49%, which is almost half. If you consider that milk is a beverage, so we can easily drink a lot, 
one good glass is 250 grams, so about 8 grams of fat, and as we will learn, fat in milk is not of the best quality, then yes, it is definitely better to go for the reduced fat version if you drink milk regularly. But now let's go back to our nutrition facts label. This is a label for whole milk. The first information we get is the serving size, which is considered to be 1 8 fluid ounces cup. This cup provides 146 calories, and 71 of these calories come from fat. Again, this is almost half, so the calculation we made before was correct. A look at the nutrition facts label spares us from having to do our own calculation every time. This cup provides 8 grams of total fat. The label also compares this with the daily value for the average adult. These 8 grams of lipids are 12% of the total amount of lipids an average adult should get every day. Then, the label specifies how many of these total lipids are saturated lipids. This will make more sense later in this course when we study the lipid. But I'm sure you know already that saturated fats in general are not the best for your health, and two-thirds of the lipids in milk are saturated. This is at least in part what I meant before when I said that fat in milk is not of the best quality. The label also specifies how many trans fats are in our food, and again, this will all make sense later. Moving on, the label tells us how much cholesterol and how much sodium are present in our milk. Then, it shows us how many total carbohydrates are in our cup of milk, 13 grams. Now, you have to be very careful here. The nutrition facts label includes dietary fiber in the total carbohydrates count, so these are not just the digestible carbs. I personally think this is very confusing, but that's how it is. Now, in the case of milk, this is meaningless because milk provides no fiber and the sugar lactose accounts for all those 11 grams. But if we were looking at the label of a fiber-containing food, then we would have to subtract the grams of dietary fiber from the grams of total carbs to find out how many digestible carbs are in there. Next, we have the total grams of proteins, 8 grams, and the content of some important micronutrients, expressed as percent of the daily value. This cup of milk covers 5% of our average daily need for vitamin A, 28% of our need for calcium, while it doesn't contribute to our daily need for vitamin C or iron. This is the nutrition facts label of whole wheat bread. The serving size is one slice. It provides 69 calories, 8 of which from fat. Indeed, there's only 1 gram of total fat in this slice of bread with almost no saturated and trans fat. I say almost because you see that, curiously, these zero grams of saturated fat cover 1% of the daily value. This is because numbers are rounded, so that zero is actually 0 0.2. No cholesterol, 132 milligrams of sodium, which is not little, then 12 grams of total carbohydrates. Two of these are fibers, so digestible carbohydrates are actually 12 minus 2, 10 grams. Two of these are simple sugars, so the remaining 8 are starch. We then have 4 grams of proteins in our slice of bread and a little calcium and iron. I'm now giving you a little assignment involving macronutrients calculation and I strongly encourage you to try your hand at it. Not so much because you should do this kind of calculation normally, but because doing it at least once in your life is the only way to make sure you have fully grasped the concepts we presented over the last few videos. So let's make a simple sandwich with whole wheat bread, Swiss cheese, and pork ham. This is the percent nutrient composition of these three ingredients. For our sandwich, we're going to use two slices of bread, which correspond to 60 grams, one slice of cheese, which is 30 grams, and two slices of ham, which is another 30 grams. If I have done a good job explaining over the last couple of videos, you should now be able to calculate these four things. 1. The percent nutrient composition of your actual sandwich, meaning what percent of your whole sandwich is made of lipids, what percent is made of proteins, what of carbs, what of water, and what percent of your whole sandwich is made of fiber. 2. How many total calories does your sandwich provide? 3. What percent of this energy comes from lipid, what comes from proteins, and what percentage of the total calorie of this sandwich come from carbs? And 4. How does it compare to the ideal macronutrient distribution of diet in general? After you have done your calculation, you can find the solution by following the link below.